it's final dates time, guys. Here we are, Married at First Sight UK, Season 9, Episode 31. I love the way that in a lot of these scenarios the women say, oh, I really feel like my man has thought about this date. As if we're supposed to believe these guys actually paid for things like helicopter rides and off-track racing. I don't think so. I think the producers paid for this. Come on, let's be honest. Anyway, <laughs> the, the funniest bit already has been Nathan and Lacey. Nathan thought he'd take Lacey up in a helicopter and while he was up in the wild blue sky he'd tell her that he loved her. But it backfires and he ends up feeling sick and wants to vomit out of the helicopter. I'm brilliant! Fantastic! I, I would be more conversational with you, but uh, I think it's good right now. Are you good at him? I'm a bit sick. Whoa! Definitely should have had that sandwich before I got ahead. Oh. I'm trying to work on this TV romantic up here, but uh, I, I feel I feel ill. Oh. Well, it's in a big bag. I believe you want to see. Maybe. Yeah. Probably don't want to ruin the uh, the moment, but. Uh, I feel sick, you feel sick, it's not me. <laughs> Five minutes and you're on the ground. So who knows when he'll say he loves her? Maybe, I don't know, whenever. Maybe when they're driving home from the helicopter ride and he's still feeling sick. He's got to say it at some point, hasn't he? But I thought that was really quite brilliant. Then we have Luke and Amy and of course it's a continuing disaster. It really is. He, um, he takes her on a cooking class and they're cooking stuff, and he's still making comments. Although he is stopping himself every now and then. But at the same time, I do feel like he's getting a bit too much stick for saying things that aren't that bad, like complimenting her outfit. And then he's licking the spoon at the end, and she can't stand it, she wants him to stop. I just think she doesn't like him anymore. And I don't really think her problem is necessarily with, you know, what Luke is doing. I think her problem is she just doesn't like Luke. And she needs to move on to someone else. Maybe Adam. Oh well, in the sense. That's actually really sexy. I'm not gonna lie. Leather. And <laughs> I don't know what it, what this could be, but it's at, back at, back at home, my memories of my mum is her doing this, and then she used to give us the mixer, oh. and she'd be like, "Who wants the bowl and who wants the the blade?" <laughs> I always went for the blade. I don't know. I just like getting my right time. Behave. I think it's going great. I think it's what we need after the last commitment ceremony. My mum used to do this. It's called jiggling. Look, jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. <laughs> yeah. And we're bouncing off each other. A sort of banter going on. You know, she seems to be relaxing, which is nice. Come here. Come on, I'm not ready for that yet. Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> not today. Yes. Oh my god, Amy, come on. I just feel really uncomfortable. Luke's making inappropriate sexual comments towards me yet again. This is a cooking class, not a porno. I was licking it. Yeah, you are licking it. Do you try some? It's delicious. Stop it. It's giving me the ick. Do not lick that spoon like that. I've given Luke chance after chance after chance. It just creeps me out. Just stop. When is this going to end? Oh dear. Looks like Luke and Amy's relationship is going the way of a few others this series, such as Rochelle and Orson and Ryan and Siobhan and Stephen and Hannah. So we have this moment where Amy basically tells Luke, look, you know, I don't trust you. And goes on about the innuendos he's gone through that day, which weren't that many as far as we could see. Then she says she's got questions prepared for him to answer, because of course, as we know, guys, Every time you go on a date with your other half, you always take a load of questions on your phone to ask them, because that's normal. And she goes through the questions, he answers them, and then of course we have the difficult question, how many other relationships have you been in? Now he had already told her apparently that it was only one or two. Then he does endless counting, I thought he was going to come up with a number like a hundred, like they do in Love Island. But then after all that counting he said eight, and she was absolutely livid, and she stormed off, and she said I can't trust him, he told me one or two, Eight is a much bigger number, and she's right. 
She's right, it's much bigger than one or two. You're not seeing today. Uncomfortable a few times today. That's going to be quite sexual comments. Just a few little bits. And that's, that makes me sad, you know, because this is the last thing I wanted to do to you is make you feel like that. Maybe if I did trust you, the sexual comments and things like that wouldn't make me feel uncomfortable. But I don't trust you. Relationships are built on trust. Friendships are built on trust. Marriages are built on trust. If we can't trust each other, then we're not going to go anywhere. So I've prepared some questions for you. You've got to answer honestly, oh. truthful. This is a no bullshit zone. Yeah. Okay, first question. So what is the worst thing about our relationship? I feel... Be honest. Yeah. The worst part of our relationship is that I feel we are very... Dis distant from each other. The physical distance as well. There have been many times where I've seen you in the kitchen and I just want to literally just put my hands on you and just turn your life upside down in a nice way. Okay, moving swiftly forward. Do you like me to portray yourself as someone you think I want or need? Absolutely not. I do not lie in any shape or form to better myself. So to say that you've never done Butler in the Buffin before, is that not trying to make yourself look better? At those instances, yes. Those instances have come across, but in, in, initially the intention was never, ever, and that's truthful. Okay, so next question. And I want you to be the most honest that you've ever been. Can you actually truthfully tell me how many relationships you've had? Because obviously I lived in Malta as well. Yeah. Why is it taking so long? I asked him at the beginning how many relationships he'd had. He said one, then it's two relationships. What the fuck? Eight. Gosh. That's a lot more than two. Yes, that's more than two. Like that's six, yeah. six people that you've failed to tell me you've been in a relationship with. Yeah. Obviously, I am shocked. How can I ever trust this person? Well, even that number's probably inaccurate. <laughs> bollocks. Absolutely bollocks. I'm definitely very upset that Amy just walked out. It's very frustrating because I'm being honest now and you know, she's getting grief from my honesty as well. Then, after he's doing his piece to camera, the producers or someone on the show actually asks him, how many relationships have you had? And he says, probably 15 to cover myself. So, yes, he's had a lot of relationships prior to marriage, but isn't that like normal? Don't a lot of people have lots of relationships before marriage? And the whole point of marriage is you've gone through all those relationships and now you've decided this one person is the one I'm going to stay with forever. But maybe she can't get past the fact that he didn't tell her the whole truth and if he did it intentionally then that is a problem and I understand why the trust would be partially broken but it could be repaired. If he did it absent-mindedly and genuinely hadn't sat down to think about just how many relationships he had I think he should be given the benefit of the doubt. But it's both ways isn't it really? Still it's not looking good but I do feel like now Amy's not really making an attempt to stay. I don't think she wants to stay, does she? I think she just wants to be free of him now. And I think she's got a good reason now just to leave him in the dust. Poor old Luke. Poor old Luke. He seemed like a nice guy. But now he must be forever thrown into the naughty cupboard of reality television. Potentially 15 to cover myself. You wouldn't know, judging by this episode, that Sasha and Ross 
ever had their fallout last night and the whole disastrous commitment ceremony. In fact, you wouldn't even know that she had any problems with his temper because they go out on a date, guys, and all they talk about is the problem of who's going to move where. They give each other gifts and talk about how in love they are. And his temper doesn't come up. It's quite strange, really. It's very, very odd that it's just been left out. Well, maybe it's going to come later in tonight's episode, I don't know, but for now, it's not been mentioned. And everything's great with Sasha and Ross. They're so in love. I mean, talk about a complete 360 turn. At the moment, is who's going to move where? Well, obviously, I don't want to be right in the other day. I think it's really hard not to be worried about the moving dilemma. I just feel like he might get home and want to stay there and we end up drifting apart. It's been a mad experience. I'm glad we're here and I feel happier. Got to know you more. When I first started, I just knew you were going to be the one. Did you? I did. did. Why? It's, I don't know, just something clicks. Mm. It's weird. A little bit. That's what I'm off and love about you as well. Right. The way you do style language. Oh, yeah. I mean, I could tell you're very passionate about it. I started learning before because of my job and for work. I'm working in the deaf community. Yeah, step to do style language as well. Polly and Adam. Well, look, it wouldn't be an episode of Married at First Sight, UK season nine, without Polly having one of her outbursts. And of course, this has to happen. They're having a little picnic, and she talks to Adam about how she wants a reassurance of the relationship. And Adam says he's not really going to give that. It's not what he does. And it causes a big storm. And of course, Polly's upset. And Adam refers to seeing again the old Polly. He wants her to judge him by his actions rather than words, which is a good thing to do if someone does actually do what they say they're going to do, rather than just talking about it and doing nothing, that is a good thing. But yeah, it's another Polly outburst. We're living for them now, aren't we, guys? But you could say something along the lines of, well, yeah, there obviously is something there. We have spoke about le like what we're going to do when we leave. Like, <sighs> This is where we went from that massive argument, where it was like, you want this, I want this, I want this, but no, you never think what I need. You. I need to be made to not feel uncomfortable. I feel like you're giving me what you want to give me and you're not giving me what I want. It's never been an issue with other partners when I'm giving them the world. But I'm not. They don't need partners, reassurance. But I do. That's what I mean. I can't I can't give reassurance. That's not me. But I'm not asking for it always. Once in a blue moon might be nice. I don't really feel like I've had it once in six weeks. I'm gonna sit there and go, oh, I care about you, you know. Because that's what you do. That's not what I do, and I don't think I will ever be that guy. No, but you've got to understand that what I'm saying is, this is what I want and need, and this is what I would like from you, and it's just not there. Anyone can say words. It's not about words, it's about action. Yeah, but your actions still don't really validate me enough to show me that you like me in that way. They do apart from sex. We're just, we're going to go around in circles now. Today's given me something to think about. I do feel like the old Polly is slowly creeping back. I'm just bored of it, to be honest. I really need to think where me and Polly go from here. A pretty positive way to end this episode, guys. Can you believe that Amy decided she was wrong for the way she was treating Luke and apologised? I can't believe it. I really can't. But you know what, I think she probably thought, if I'm not careful, he'll walk and I'll lose him forever. And she probably thought, at the end of the day, I'd rather keep him than lose him. So she ate a bit of humble pie and apologised to him, and they reconciled. And his gift to her was to give back the wedding rings. And they put them on each other and they seem very happy now. And it was actually quite a nice moment. And i got to say, for all the things I've said about Amy and all the madness she's been through the last few episodes, I respect her for having the humility to say sorry, because we all know that to truly apologise, you have to be humble, you have to eat crow, you know, you have to kind of say, OK, I've got to admit I was wrong, and I respect her for doing that. So well done, Amy. And I do hope it lasts. I think it does need, you know, a good dose of understanding on both sides of the fence, but I hope it lasts. 
Let's just not speak about previous relationships you know, anymore. You know, and I have really, really sorry. Please like, accept my apology because I'm, I'm, I'm so gutted. I'm sorry that I pushed you in that moment. I regret that as well. But seeing as we're in a better mood now, both of us, I thought maybe I can give you a little gift. I really regret taking the wedding ring off in Blackburn. I was breaking our commitment. He never deserved that, no matter how angry I was. So I think it's nice that we can, you know, at least consider putting the things back on and then fighting for the commitment that we've made to each other. If we put the rings back on, are you going to be taking it off again? Mm -hmm. like, this is the worry. I definitely would wear it proudly. Mm. Marriage is obviously with the good and the bad, isn't it? Yes. I'm happy to put them back on. Well, that's nice. Do you want me to put it on for you? Yes, please. <laughs> and then I'll put yours on for you. There you go. There you go. Okay. That's better. No taking it off. <laughs> no. And I won't launch mine across the restaurant <laughs> again. I think Amy really likes the rings. It's the start of new beginnings. I'm going to really try and stay away from any white lies. And hopefully that honesty and consistency will give us longevity. Then we go to Nathan and Lacey. And Nathan, God bless him, finally told Lacey that he loves her. He struggled, but he finally got it out. And then they gave each other really tacky gifts. She got him a teddy bear that says, I love you to the stars and back. And he bought her a star. Not my kind of thing. I'm sorry if I'm being judgmental. I just thought, Ugh. Yeah, no, I am. Um, I want to make it all like romantic in that. Mm. And like, you know, keep it cool, fly with a few skyscrapers and that, like proper good stuff. Yeah. I have done flowers before, I have done like spontaneous stuff before, but I don't think I've ever done anything like I've done for you. I think you're a very amazing girl and you're very beautiful and you have a very good heart. <laughs> That's so nice. Wow. Well, yeah. How <laughs> well, what? Uh, I just wanna say, I love you to the stars and back. I can't believe Nathan said that he loves me. Good luck, the luck is going on. I love you as well. I actually do. Anyway, so we ended the episode with at least a couple of couples Amy and Luke, Lacey and Nathan on the right road. Not so sure about Polly and Adam. And again, as I said earlier, Sasha and Ross, we didn't go back to them and they completely didn't touch on his temper. Now, it looks like the next episode is going to be quite a feisty one where the guys meet up, the girls meet up, and some of the old girls come back, some of the old guys come back, and they all have a good old argument about why they hate everyone. So it's going to be fun. Thanks as always for watching, guys. Catch you again tomorrow for another episode and we shall enjoy it. Yes, we shall.